Hey BookTube, I have a chatty tag video for you today. This is the Lost to Books tag. Um, this was created by Shanti Stanfast, and I originally saw this over on uh, Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf channel. And basically, in this tag, Sean is just asking everyone to discuss when they were lost to books. What point they knew that they were uh, officially uh, a book lover, book person, and then um, how that affected your life thereafter. So it's a very chatty tag. There aren't really any prompts or anything like that. It's just uh, you talking about your journey with books, essentially, and when you realized that you were completely lost to them. And so kind of like with Amy's video, um, when she started out, she said that there wasn't really a specific moment where she was lost to books. And I kind of have the same thought. I can't think of a specific moment. Um, I grew up, um, I spent the first 14 years of my life living in this ratty, um, somewhat dilapidated old farmhouse out in the country. And um, I was an only child, so I was alone a lot, um, other than my parents, of course, but I didn't have siblings. And I didn't live in town, so, you know, I couldn't just go over to a friend's house. Um, my mom did babysit for a boy who lived about a mile away from us. Um, and we were friends, but again, you know, there wasn't like what you think of when you grow up in a town or a city where you have people that come and go and you all play together or whatever happens. I'm still not really sure how that works. But anyway, um, so... Um, because of my sort of isolated childhood, um, of course, I spent a lot of time figuring out how to entertain myself. And from a very early age, my parents made sure to read to me. And so there are always books in our house. Um, my mom would read me, you know, your typical children's books. Um, I had a thing <clears throat> when I was a, a kid for the Bernstein Bear books by Stan and Jan Bernstein, and um, I loved those books to the point where my mother tells this story about how when I was old enough for her to take me to, I believe it was Sunday school, uh, I asked my mom if there were going to be any other cubs there. So yeah, um, I now tell that story to people just because so my mom can't embarrass me with it at some later date. But mm -hmm. anyway, so I was hardcore about Bernstein Bears, and um, so I really loved those books. And then we had to drive about probably 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes at least to get to um, the nearest like big library. Um, and my mom always talks about how whenever she would take me to the library, I would go and check out um, tons of books. And then in the car, I would have them spread out all over the back seat, like trying to read them all at once, uh, which is something I still kind of do, to be honest. And um, so basically from a very young age, I was obsessed with books. I was reading before I could actually read. I would look at a book and like make up a story uh, to go with the, the pictures or even just the words on the page. Um, and so... Yeah, as a very young kid, I was constantly, like, surrounded by books and fascinated by them and always wanting to uh, have them with me. I would take, like, four or five books with us with me to church <laughs> when I was a kid and attempt to try to, like, read them all. Um, people still tease me about that, actually. Um, anyway, and so then um, as I got into, like, upper elementary school, Things like the Boxcar Children and the Babysitter's Club became some of my, like, go-to reads. We had the um, Scholastic Book Orders when I was in elementary school, and so I would always have my mom order books off of that. Uh, and I would, you know, circle the ones that I wanted or whatever, and uh, it was always an exciting day when the teacher said that our book orders had come in. And then, because we lived out in the country... Uh, I had about an hour bus ride both to and from school, and so there were plenty of bus rides where I would read on the way home, or not not necessarily on the way to school, because 
I was picked up super early in the morning, so sometimes it was still dark, and I was tired, and um, so I didn't always read necessarily in the in the morning, but definitely on the way home I would I would read, um, especially once everybody else had really been dropped off, because I was the last one to be dropped off, first one on the bus, last one off, um, and so uh, I would read then as well. Uh, when I got older, like into middle school ish, and um, my reading started to drop off. Uh, when I was in middle school, at least in like sixth and seventh grade, I was still a pretty avid reader. Um, and like I joked that when I was in, I think like seventh grade, we had sustained silent reading time. And I feel like I read my way through the middle school library uh, um, <laughs> with that particular. Uh, time period having the sustained silent reading time and so then when I was 14 we moved to um, the town that I went to school in um, which is where my grandparents had lived my grandfather had passed away and my grandma was moving into an assisted living apartment and so we moved into the house that my grandparents had in town and so we we left the country, um, and this was, in a weird way, looking back on it, kind of a, a turning point in my life that wasn't necessarily a good one, um, because I didn't want to move from the country. I was absolutely in love with living on, on the farm, um, and so I was mad that we had to move to town, and our farmhouse was huge, okay? You know, it was me and my parents, and that farmhouse had five bedrooms in it. And my room was bigger than my living room that I have in my current um, duplex. So I had this giant room with all this space. And we moved into a two-bedroom house in town um, with no basement or anything like that. So very cramped. And I was not at all excited about this. I also didn't understand, like I mentioned earlier on in my video, this whole idea of like seeing friends like, you know, just calling each other and like going over to their houses and stuff because I had so little experience with that growing up in the country and I missed that whole like isolation and once we were home like it was just up to me to entertain myself. Um, and then also starting high school uh, when we moved to town, um, the, I, we moved to town the summer after my eighth grade year, so right before um, I went to high school. And I absolutely did not enjoy high school. Um, and I didn't read much when I was in high school. I was very much into music when I was in high school. Um, I was in, into music prior to that. But in high school, it pretty much became my lifeline. I played clarinet and band. And band was about the only thing I really cared about in high school. And uh, I joked that my band director was my best friend in high school because she was only seven years older than me. And we got along very well. Um, she was also about the only person who I could tolerate for longer than five minutes without wanting to kill. Um, so yes, I was a very angry high schooler, <laughs> a very angry teenager. And I didn't read very much, um, partly because I didn't really know what books interested me. And this was before YA was YA, like it is now. And so, you know, we would go to a store and I would look at the book section and I was just kind of like, none of this looks good, you know? And then in high school, I've talked about this a little bit before on my channel, my English teachers were uh, not that great. Um, we didn't really read anything that really like grabbed me or made me want to read more. And so my reading fell off precipitously when we were in high, when I was in high school. And I spent most of my time, you know, listening to music and playing in band and and uh, being caught up in stupid high school drama that was pointless and, you know, whatever. Anyway, also struggling with math took up a lot of my time as well. Um, but that's, that's an aside. Uh, so... Four years of high school finally end and I graduate and I go to college and I had this like mental list in my head the, of my, what I was going to major in and then my backup plans, right? 
And for the longest time in high school, I had planned on being an elementary education major. Uh, this is partly because I had some teachers when I was in elementary school who were extremely influential in my life, and I absolutely loved them, and I wanted to be like them. Um, and so I was, I was going to be an elementary ed major. So I go to college, um, and I actually, and aside again, I actually now work at the same college that I was an undergrad at, um, live in the same town that <laughs> I lived in during undergrad. Uh, but anyway, so um, I started out in elementary ed. I was a second semester junior when I, well, I, I knew before my second semester of my junior year, but I was a second semester junior when I finally was like, you know what, this isn't working for me. I hate this major. I hate my classes. I'm extremely unhappy. Um, and so I'm switching my major to English. Um, and so that's exactly what I did. I switched my major to English. And I can still tell you the exact day that I switched my major. It was January 29th, January 29th of 2007. And um, yeah, it kind of spiraled from there. I, I started to read a lot more. I started to be more curious because my English professors were amazing. And they, I, w I was learning things that I hadn't learned before. I was reading books that I had no prior knowledge or background of because of how bad my English education was in high school. And so I was, you know, falling down this rabbit hole of just pure curiosity and desire to, to learn um, and to gather knowledge. And so not only did I major in English and read everything in terms of what we were required to read for my classes, but I also minored in history. And so I read a lot of books for my history classes as well, which sparked a whole new uh, level of interest in various historical time periods, like the Vietnam War, um, World War II and the Holocaust, uh, women's studies, women's history, um, all of these different areas that before I had not really paid much attention to because of my high school education not being the most inspiring or the most um, thorough in terms of like capturing my attention in various subject areas. And so I was just hungry for all of this knowledge. And um, in addition to taking classes, books were the way that I could absorb this knowledge, right? And so, you know, we would read something in class, and I would be like, okay, I want to know more. And so that would lead me to reading another book uh, that was related to the one we had read for class, and then another book. And, I, you know, I would be going to the library and grabbing these books that were related to various topics that I was interested in. And so... That was, if I had to pick a moment, really, that was when I was lost to books. Because I loved them not just for the stories at that point and the escapism, but because I knew that they contained knowledge. And so undergrad and then into grad school was when I started reading a lot more nonfiction. Up until that point, I hadn't really read much nonfiction at all. Um, but when I realized how hungry I was for this knowledge and how fascinating nonfiction could be, I was, I was lost. Like, um, and the older I get, the more nonfiction books I, I collect. Um, I think I mentioned on this channel that my parents have brought up another bookshelf for me, um, a few weekends ago. And this is a bookshelf that has one, two, three, four, five shelves on it. Of those five shelves, four of them are completely full of nonfiction books. There's only one shelf that has fiction on it. Um, so... My my reading tastes have expanded out into um, nonfiction and all the different you know things subjects that are written about for nonfiction, and um, so a lot of my being lost to books comes from the fact that I crave knowledge, and that started in undergrad when I realized just the wide depth and birth of stuff you could learn. Um, not just from my classes, but through reading, 
right? And I've always had this impossible goal of knowing everything. Um, not reading everything necessarily, but knowing everything. And I know that's not possible, but man, I'm going to try. <laughs> because, like I said, I, I want to know about every subject almost. And so, yeah, I just read so much and so widely compared to a lot of people. And I know that sounds slightly elitist, um, but like I said, it's that whole knowledge thing that I want to know about and I'm curious about so many things that I will read books on, on so many different topics that you can't hardly keep up with it. Anyway, so then I went on to go to grad school and got my master's in English and in rhetoric and composition and um, started teaching at the university I am also an alumni of. And um, during my college and graduate school years, and even when I first start, like after I graduated from graduate school, I moved a lot. And, you know, different apartments, different town, um, and then back to the town that I lived in for college. And, and so there for a while, like when I moved to go back to graduate school, I was like, I'm only taking one shelf of books. And, uh, of course, with library book sales and stuff, you know, that one shelf became, you know, books piled on the floor. And then after, um, after graduate school, I moved in with, um, some friends from undergrad and I had a bedroom, um, where I basically had to keep all of my stuff. And so again, I had one bookshelf with books stacked on the floor. Um, especially because that year I worked for a couple months at Half Price Books, and so I was acquiring, you know, bag loads of books on a regular basis because our discount um, as an employee at Half Price Books was amazing. Uh, and so I uh, <clears throat> got a lot of books that way. And then I moved back to the town I went to college in and to start working for my alma mater. And I lived in this really awful apartment the first year I was living back here. And I was acquiring books, but I knew I wasn't going to stay in that apartment uh, because it was so awful and I had so many problems. And so I um, was collecting books. And when I moved out of that apartment, I had, I believe, 16 boxes of books that I moved. Um, and... I moved from that apartment into where I am now, which is a two bedroom duplex. And uh, it's a fairly good sized duplex, all things considered. I mean, it's not super huge, but it's also not super tiny either. Um, but within this duplex, I now have eight bookcases. And my book collection has just grown exponentially um, because I make my own money. Um, sad as that salary may be as an adjunct English instructor, but I, I have my own money and I can spend it how I choose. I don't have my parents, you know, saying, oh, well, we're only going to buy you, you know, $20 worth of books. Well, if I, if I decide I want to spend 80 bucks on books, well, I spend 80 bucks on books, right? Um, and so having that cash flow um, that is mine to make my own decisions with and then having my own space um, has caused my books to, my book collection to grow. Um, and I'm not necessarily like, I don't, I don't collect books for as physical objects necessarily. Um, I mean, I like them as physical objects, but I'm not into like the, the antiquarian books that much. I have one shelf that has some older books on it from library book sales and stuff, but. I, I, I like books for the knowledge and to learn about things. And so um, I, I will get books, you know, in all sorts of conditions, as long as they're not completely falling apart um, in all subject areas and in quite a few different genres. Um, and so it's very eclectic and uh, also, like I said, has grown exponentially since I moved into this particular duplex that I've been in now for uh, six years 
and also because I have been able to acquire uh, more furniture and more shelving and then also you know I have my own job and I'm not dependent on somebody else to pay for the books like I was when I was younger and so my book collection has just grown and then of course I work at a university and I teach writing and so that's a whole other level of this you know being lost to books because I work with people who are also in a lot of ways lost to books um, and even though I feel like a lot of, you know, like any talk amongst my colleagues about books and literature and ideas gets lost in university bureaucracy, which I can't stand, um, you know, in their own classes and in their own ways, they too are lost to books and they also have, you know, big book collections. It's still fun for me to go into my colleagues' offices and look at all the books they have, you know, on their shelves and, and, um, so, yeah, I, okay, like I said when I first started the video, I don't have a specific moment really when I was lost to books because I was a reader from a very young age. But if I had to pick a specific time when like all hope was lost and I was definitely lost to books, it would be that moment in undergrad where I was like, okay, you know, this is going to be my life when I switched my major to English. And, um, it's went on from there. Um, I I will always be a reader. Uh, as to whether or not I will continue on my academic path, I don't know. Um, I like the university, but I also hate the university, uh, which is, again, kind of an aside. But we shall see where it takes me. Um, but I do know that if and when I ever move out of this duplex, all of my books, it's going to be... Oh boy, I'm going to have to hire movers like Amy was talking about in her video because I probably have, uh, I don't know, a couple thousand now, I think. So, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this, this chatty video with my various thoughts about my reading life and about when I was lost to books. Um, if you're interested in doing this tag, please do so. Um, please go back and watch Amy and Sean's uh, videos is they are really interesting to listen to as well um, and if you have any comments and want to chat with me in the comment field that would be awesome and I will talk to you again soon thanks booktube